One of the most tragic character transformations entails in the life of Walter White, a multi-dimensional character undergoing a transition from a good man trying to provide to a drug kingpin capable of pure evil. A man who continued to lie and manipulate people that cared for him. I feel like you're upset with me because you think that I'm up to something. To build your little empire on my work? How could you say that to me? You walked away, you, you abandoned us, me, Ellie. The genius of yours. Maybe he's still out there. Walter White. <laughs> you got me. A man who failed to develop deep connections with anyone and only saw what use they could provide to him. What do you even care as long as you get what you want? You don't give a shit about me. Look at you. What have you got in your life? Nothing. Nobody. A man who developed one of the darkest psychologies I've ever seen. I watched Jane die. I was there. I watched her overdose and choke to death. My son! My bottle, my house! If you don't know who I am, maybe your best course would be to tread lightly. You clearly don't know who you're talking to, so let me clue you in. I am not in danger, Skyler. I am the danger. A guy opens his door and gets shot, and you think that of me? No. I am the one who knocks. How dark can the mind of Walter White get? To give Walter White an accurate, in-depth psychological analysis and diagnosis, it's crucial we map out all the major events of his story. We're introduced to Walter White as a 50-year-old man, living a life of what I'd describe as one of unsatisfaction. Doctor, my wife is seven months pregnant with a baby we didn't intend. My 15-year-old son has cerebral palsy. I am an extremely overqualified high school chemistry teacher. When I can work, I make $43,700 per year. I have watched all of my colleagues and friends surpass me in every way imaginable, and within 18 months, I will be dead. I think this block of speech gives a basis to paint a picture of his unsatisfactory life. Walter is married to a woman named Skylar, and as mentioned, they have an unplanned pregnancy. Here, Walter is probably expressing concern over the financial side of having a baby, of course, but what's also important to note is that his marriage is one that lacks that spark. In an early scene of the couple, we see Skylar more interested in selling items on eBay than being intimate with her husband. Of course, this may be linked to the hormonal highs and lows during a pregnancy, but to Walter, his marriage is another area of his life that isn't the one he dreamed of. Walter White Jr. is of course Walt's son. He mentions this cerebral palsy because, although nothing wrong with a disability, it adds to Walt feeling like his life isn't perfect. It gives him a feeling of, why me, on top of everything else. What's also important about Junior is his relationship with Hank, Walt's DEA brother-in-law, who displays a much more charismatic and masculine presence in contrast to Mr. White, and Junior clearly prefers being around him as he's the cool one. This adds a sense of emasculation to Walt, something hurting his pride. By colleagues and friends surpassing him, the two most obvious people he is referring to are Elliot and Gretchen Schwartz. Grey Matter Technologies is a multi-billion dollar pharmaceutical company founded by Walt and Elliot decades earlier. In the same period it was founded, Walter fell in love with and eventually got engaged to his lab assistant Gretchen. However, it turned out that once Walter found out about the wealth of her family, it damaged his pride in some way and he abruptly ended things. Not only did he split with Gretchen, but he gave up on Grey Matter and sold his share for $5,000. Gretchen would then marry Elliot and co-own Grey Matter alongside him. Decades later, however, the company will grow to become Walt's biggest mistake, swapping out the chance to be a multi-millionaire to instead work a below average salary job. He still kept Elliot and Gretchen as friends, but missing out on being a part of Grey Matter became an implicit contributor to his future actions. Walt has lung cancer, and with it being stage three, he's told his condition is treatable, but not curable. And by all accounts, Walt has accepted the coming of his end. However, this acceptance quickly becomes a turning point in Walt's life. Lung cancer, inoperable. Best case scenario with chemo, I'll live maybe another couple of years. Typically, upon hearing that you have cancer, the initial reaction is shock, followed by denial. But when Walt was told about his diagnosis, his initial reaction was numbness. His life had already gone every way he never wanted it to, and now it was going to end with an untimely death. However, the emotion that followed next was fear. Not the fear of dying per se, but the fear of what he was leaving behind for his family, which was nothing. 
Financially, he had little to his name, and with a dependent wife and two kids, his death would lead them into poverty. His kids wouldn't be able to get an idle university education, his wife would struggle with medical bills, the mortgage still needed to be paid off, and as the man, it was Walter's job to provide. Through a flurry of events, he had discovered a former student of his, Jesse Pinkman, was in the methamphetamine business and bought her an opportunity. But you know the business, and I know the chemistry. Maybe you and I could partner up. Up to this point in time, Walt had been the complete contrast of a criminal, but now, out of desperation and limited time, decided to start selling meth, with him being the cook and Jesse being in charge of business. I don't plan on explaining Walt's every action during his time in the drug business, but there were a few major events that took place to change Walt's character. Not long after starting, he faced the reality of the drug game, that is one of violence. After being held at gunpoint, the explosion he used managed to kill one of the two dealers, Emilio. The other one, Crazy 8, fell unconscious, meaning Walt had to finish the job himself. After keeping him in Jesse's basement for a few days, he strangled him to death with a bike lock. As expected, killing for the first time traumatised Walt, but also became his initiation moment. After partaking in violence, he had two roads to take. To realise he can't do this anymore, or acceptance of the game being the game. This decision becomes exemplified once Elliot and Gretchen offered to give Walt a job at Grey Matter, one with healthcare insurance that would cover the cost of his expensive cancer treatment. I'm pretty sure 99% of viewers would accept an offer like this in Walt's situation, but if he was to take this offer, there would be no breaking bad. His pride gets in the way, viewing the offer as a handout. In his eyes, it's out of pity, and that once they heard about his cancer, he became a charity case to them. He turned it down, and it gave him a greater motivation to earn his own money cooking meth. As time proceeded, Walt continued to justify in his mind that becoming a criminal was for the sake of his family, which I don't doubt was his original reason for starting. But internally, something was positively reinforcing his involvement. He was finally feeling something other than the unfulfillment of being an emasculated, underpaid teacher. He started to make large amounts of money, he started to gain power and respect, and to separate his two lives, a new identity needed to be created. Say my name. Heisenberg. He had decided on Heisenberg, based on Werner Heisenberg, a German theoretical physicist, and this was the alias he would go by when partaking in the drug trade. When he spends time with his family, he can remain the same timid version of himself, but when Heisenberg, he's forced to act more ruthless, more violent, and less sympathetic. These traits may be forced at the start since he's always been the good guy, but the further along he goes, the more he lies and manipulates his own family, and the more natural the bad traits become. The popular term, fake it till you make it, actually has some psychological backing, suggesting that pretending to be someone you're not for long enough will actually allow you to behave in this manner naturally, at least to some extent. During his time in the game, Bolt struggles to maintain a healthy relationship with his wife, continuing to be absent, getting caught having two phones, and most importantly, he was a terrible liar. So stupid. I could have rinsed off at the station. Halfway home, I started to realize, wait a minute, there's a water hose right there next to the air pump, you know, for tires. Anyway, so that was my day. How was yours? Dad? Yeah. Please, can you just tell the truth? His constant suspicious behavior led to his wife finding out about his drug events which led to her having an affair with her boss and filing for a divorce. But this didn't deter Walt, as he persisted to keep the family together, because everything was about to change. Walt was about to make life-changing money after catching the attention of a very powerful man. Hello, and welcome to the Los Pollos Hermanos family. My name is Gustavo, but you can call me Gus. To aid him in running an illegal drug operation, Walt had hired a shady lawyer who went by Saul Goodman. Saul then put Walt in touch with a high-level distributor named Gustavo Fring. Now Gus wasn't just a meth distributor, he was the owner of Los Pollos Hermanos, a fried chicken chain fairly popular in the southern states of the US. He was a man with fantastic people skills, a brilliant business mind, and someone Walt started to both respect and fear. At first, Walt rejected Gus's offer to work for him so that he could spend more time building his family back together. But after Gus offered him $15 million to cook meth for one year, his heart shifted. 
he would become a multi-millionaire from his chemistry skills, just like he believed he was owed with grey matter. He would go on to work in Gus's lab alongside Jesse, who would continue to assist him in cooking. Eventually, after Skylar realised she couldn't change him, she decided to help launder the enormous amounts of money he'd been making, while still keeping the truth hidden from the rest of the family, particularly Hank, who was on the hunt to find out who the infamous Heisenberg truly was, unaware it was the man he was often sitting by at the table for dinners. Things could have played out smoothly, and Walt supposedly could have cooked for 12 months and left for good, but complications arose between him, Jesse and Gus. This video isn't about Jesse, so I won't go into too much detail, but essentially two of Gus's lower level dealers had killed a child who was also the brother of Jesse's new girlfriend. So Jesse went to retaliate, and Walt intervened, running over the two men before they could defend themselves against Jesse, before telling Jesse to run, fearing what Gus would do once he found out. Gus was obviously angry but realised he needed Walt, so he allowed him to keep cooking alongside a new assistant, Gail. Gail was a skilled chemist with a growing skill set, but couldn't cook the meth to the same purity as Walt. However, every week he would get closer and closer. Walt quickly realised once Gail could match his purity, Gus wouldn't only fire him, but murder him. So in a kill or be killed period, Walt got Jesse to shoot Gail in the face. It's gonna have to be you. What? No way, man. Listen to me. You're closer than we are. We'll have about a 20 minute lead. They've got me at the laundry and they're going to kill me. Jesse, do it now! Do it! 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 You don't have to do this. The same man who was once brought to tears at the idea of murdering had now contributed to three consecutive deaths in a short period of time. The persona of Heisenberg had consumed him, and his character hadn't just changed in the drug game, but even at home. Who are you talking to right now? Who is it you think you see? Do you know how much I make a year? I mean, even if I told you, you wouldn't believe it. Do you know what would happen if I suddenly decided to stop going into work? A business big enough that it could be listed on the NASDAQ goes belly up. Disappears. It ceases to exist without me. No, you clearly don't know who you're talking to, so let me clue you in. I am not in danger, Skyler. I am the danger. A guy opens his door and gets shot and you think that of me? No. I am the one who knocks. Let's analyse what he says here. He is implying here that he is no longer the regular Walter White his wife has been living with for the past decade or so. He is Heisenberg. He hadn't even made an annual salary from Gus at this point. However, the promise of money alone is enough to satisfy the power side of his ego. A man who at first saw the drug money as purely a means of providing is now bragging about it in a selfish matter. He clearly feels the power of responsibility. Being the cook for Gus has given him worth. It's finally given him superiority. His life of unfulfillment had finally turned around in his mind, and it strokes his ego being able to brag about this to his wife. This shows the mindset of Heisenberg, that he is one capable of violence. Although Walt didn't kill Gale and therefore wasn't the one that knocks, it was still his plan, his order, and he was the reason an innocent man was killed. In his mind, and proven by his actions, he is capable of murder, and that he has what it takes to go against Gus. Saying all of this to Skylar is a release to Walt, he told her he was a meth cook, but not the details of the game. He'd finally expressed how proud he was of this transition. He'd been viewed as the weak, cancer-ridden victim, who was now a rich and ruthless drug dealer. His emasculation had been wiped away. He felt powerful, and he wanted Skylar to know who she was talking to. He had now accepted that to survive in this game, he would have to go to extreme measures. And even more now, that like Gus had threatened his family. I will kill your wife. I will kill your son. I will kill your infant daughter. The fear of Gus's threats triggered Walt to stoop to his deepest depths. Jesse during this time was still working for Gus and his relationship with Walt had become unsteady. But he needed Jesse if he wanted to take Gus down. The girl Jesse was dating had a son named Brock. And summoning his inner Heisenberg, Walt poisoned Brock and manipulated Jesse to believe it was Gus. I'm not, I'm not lying. I'm not lying, just listen to me. Listen to me, what would I have to get? What possible? Could I, who, who would, Gus? He has, he has been 10 steps ahead of me at every turn. And now, the one thing that he needed to finally get rid of me is your consent, and boy, he's got that now. If you think that I am capable of doing this, then go. Uh, uh, put a bullet in 
my head and kill me right now. The amount of manipulation Bolt uses here is one of his darkest moments, but it works and Jesse aids him in taking down Gus. After trying different tactics, Walt finally murders him, blowing half of his face off in a planned explosion and saving his family. You would think after the killing, the near-death experiences, the amount of lying and manipulation to bear on his conscience, he would finally think he's better off resorting to spending time with his family again and leaving the game. But with the taste of the financial potential being a drug lord like Gus, Walt wasn't satisfied with what he had. He re-entered the drug game alongside Jesse and also recruited Mike, Gus's hitman and private investigator. They stole a large supply of mephlamine, the main ingredient to cook Heisenberg's meth, and started making decent money. But then the offer came. Someone wanted to buy their mephlamine in exchange for the three of them receiving five million dollars each. Mike accepted, Jesse accepted, but Walt declined. And no matter how hard they tried to convince him, he insisted on cooking and selling the meth instead. Jesse, you asked me if I was in the meth business or the money business. Neither. I'm in the empire business. It could be suggested his words here signify transformation, a downward spiral. He was once in the game to provide for his family, but was now more interested in building a drug empire. However, Walt always saw things this way, at least as soon as he made $4,000 from his first batch. As soon as he saw the potential and scalability of selling drugs, it's likely he had an inkling to finally build something for himself, linking all the way back to his departure from Grey Matter. He had a chance to build an empire once and missed, and he wasn't going to miss a second opportunity. Grey Matter is arguably more of a motivator than his family ever was. He checks how much the company is worth weekly. Care to guess what that company is worth now? Uh, millions. Billions, with a B. 2.16 billion as of last Friday. I look it up every week and I sold my share, my potential, for $5,000. Undoubtedly, his cancer diagnosis and therefore the fear of leaving his family with no money was a trigger to do something drastic. Then seeing Jesse in the meth game and hearing from Hank how much money can be made from it sparked the decision to choose cooking meth as the vehicle. But once the money started rolling in, especially once he saw what Gus was capable of, he realized that he now had a chance at retribution. Walt hired a young guy named Todd, and tried to teach him how to cook. He still tried to convince Jesse to stay, however Walt's inability to control his emotions caused him to reveal how he truly felt about Jesse. Did you? What have you got in your life? Nothing. Nobody. Oh wait, yes. Video games and go-karts. Oh, and when you get tired of that, what then? Huh? And how soon will you start using again? No matter how much convincing it took, even withholding $5 million of Jesse's money in an attempt to force him to continue cooking, Jesse wanted out. Mike was already out, and with the DEA onto him, he was leaving for good. He just needed Walt's help handing over an escape bag. But during this transaction, Walt couldn't keep his pride and ego intact. Want those names, Mike? You owe me that much. I don't owe you a damn thing. All of this, falling apart like this, is on you. Wow. <laughs> wow! Oh, that's some kind of logic right there, Mike. You screw up, get yourself followed by the DEA, and now suddenly, this is all my fault. Why don't you walk me through this, Mike? We had a good thing, you stupid son of a bitch. We had Frank, we had a lab, we had everything we needed, it all ran like clockwork. You could have yeah. shut your mouth, cooked, and made as much money as you ever needed. It was perfect, but no, you just had to blow it up, you and your pride and your ego. You just had to be the man. If you'd done your job, known your place, we'd all be fine right now. Although said in a pretty aggressive manner, Mike completely gets it right on how Walt's pride and ego caused a lot of what broke them all apart. Instead of humbly realising the reality of things, Walt allowed this same pride and ego to do something he would come to regret. I just realised that Lydia has the names, I can get them from her. I'm sorry, Mike. This, this whole thing could have been avoided. Shut the fuck up. Let me die in peace. After Walt's recent murders, he appeared to have become ruthless, standing on his actions. However, when murdering Mike, the guilt was immediate, 
He had taken Mike's life because he told him the truth about himself. This ego of Heisenberg couldn't be talked down to and it was almost impulse to get the gun and do the deed. Following this, Walt actually begins to unwind all of his motivation to stay in the game. There was a culmination of events that I can only assume are his reasons that led to this. The guilt of killing Mike made him realise the monster he had become. His cancer had come back and therefore making the money on top of the tens of millions he already had was pointless. And deep down, doing his antics with Jesse was what really made it exciting for Walt. Jesse brought a thrill to the game. Working with Todd, Walt just seemed bored and his desire to continue building Heisenberg's empire died down. He packed it up and went back to his family. But this departure was cut short after Hank made the discovery that would change the course of Walt's life. Hank has you. All along it was you. You drove into traffic to keep me from that laundry. You killed ten witnesses to save your sorry ass. You bombed a nursing home. Heisenberg. Heisenberg. You lie, two faced sack of shit. Now, afraid of the DEA capturing him, he buries his money in the desert and tries to cover his tracks. However, Jesse uncovers how it was truly Walt who poisoned Brock and not Gus, causing Jesse to use the manipulation 101 lessons he learned from Walt and convince him that he's found his money in the desert and is going to burn it. photo bitch that barrel looked familiar because i just found six more exactly like it however unbeknownst to walt jesse didn't even know where the money was he was working with the dea to capture walt and execute it perfectly however prior to this walt had contacted todd and his family of reckless killers to kill jesse giving him the coordinates of the money as that's where he thought jesse would be he tried to call them off but they came anyway capturing jesse and killing hank do what you're gonna do They steal his barrels of money, leaving 11 million of Walt's 80 million buried, and they enslave Jesse to keep cooking meth for them. Walt returns and tries to get his family to leave with him, which goes terribly wrong after Skylar realizes Walt got Hank killed. I promise you, everything don't say one more word. Get out of here now. What the hell is wrong with you? We're a family. In this moment, he realized his actions have broken his family, and the only way he can protect them now is by leaving. Walt uses Saul's connection to disappear into a new city with a new identity where he would live in solitude. Months later, Walt made a final return to New Mexico, where he would leave his remaining $9 million with Elliot and Gretchen for his son to collect on his 18th birthday. He then poisoned and consequentially murdered a woman named Lydia who was part of his business. I don't know the exact reason he killed her, but it doesn't matter as you have too many names to remember anyway. Before executing his final task, killing the men who murdered Hank, captured Jesse and stole his money. In the process of using a machine gun attached to his car, he kills all of them, but accidentally hits himself, dying as a result. This is the overview of Walt's story. You can have your opinions about Walt's morality, whether he did things for the right reason, whether he deserved what came to him, etc. I also have my opinions which I'll speak on at the end, but this analysis is going to be as objective as I can make it. Using diagnosis criteria from credible psychology sources such as the DSM-5, we can compare Walt's actions, behaviours and motives against the criteria and come to conclusions about what a criminal psychologist or psychiatrist would actually diagnose Walt with. I've seen a few videos and articles over time mentioning the psychology of Walter White, and some conditions get easily dismissed and seem to come from a subjective standpoint. Statements like, Walt felt bad after killing Mike so he's not a sociopath, which would be correct if the sole criteria for antisocial personality disorder was a lack of empathy. But that is only one of the many parts that make up the entire criteria for ASPD. When people talk about psychopaths and sociopaths, they're actually just talking about spectrums of antisocial personality disorder. I mean, who really wants to say all of that every time? But in fact, the DSM-5, the official handbook for psychological diagnosis, never refers to the diagnosis of a psychopath or sociopath, 
only antisocial personality disorder. So, let's figure out if Woe actually does or does not have ASPD. The first criteria covers the person having significant impairments in personality, both self and interpersonal functioning. Self-functioning impairments would be covered by identity and self-direction. Identity impairments are suggested by someone's egocentrism, as well as the self-esteem derived from personal gain, power or pleasure. I mean, come on. Walt is the visual representation of someone with ego-related issues, and someone who has an uncontrollable desire to obtain power following his cancer diagnosis. Egocentrism refers to someone's inability to understand that another person's view or opinion may be different than their own. Bolt's most prominent example of this is constantly trying to keep Jesse cooking after he explicitly states that he's leaving. What, just because I don't want to cook meth anymore? I'm lying down? How many more people are going to die because of us? No one. None. Now that we're in control, no one else gets hurt. Bolt's personal view was money over everything but Jesse felt like the game had taken a toll on him and chose to put his sanity over money. Bolt's inability to even be open-minded to Jesse's choice and to make clear Jesse needs to have the same mindset makes his egocentrism very clear. His love for personal gain and power is clear, but his self-esteem is evident when he recognizes himself as Heisenberg in the later stages. For decades, his self-esteem was related to being Walter White, the underpaid chemistry teacher in the less than ideal relationship and all the other things mentioned at the start. Now his self-esteem was related to being Heisenberg, the ruthless drug kingpin known for his high quality product and the killer of Gustavo Fring. This was power to him and clearly something he relished in. Self-direction impairments relates to goal setting based on personal gratification, the absence of pro-social internal standards associated with failure to conform to lawful or culturally normative ethical behaviour. Walter White is a criminal drug kingpin. Another creator, Mao Sate, calculated that if Walter White was charged for all of the crimes he committed, he would have received 18 life sentences, plus 398 years in prison, plus $161,000 in fines and community service. This video is long enough already, so let's not even waste time discussing this one. Clearly, he covers the self-functioning impairments. But what about interpersonal? Does he have an impairment in empathy? Does he have a lack of concern for feelings, needs or suffering of others, or a lack of remorse after hurting or mistreating another? Here's the problem with determining whether he fulfills this criteria. Walter White has empathy, Heisenberg doesn't. I don't just mean the alias of Heisenberg, but in the later stages of his time in the game, around the time he was going against Gus. By this stage, I believe he had become Heisenberg internally and wasn't faking the traits anymore. For example, a character I didn't mention in the story since it was already extremely long was Jay Margolis. She became Jesse's girlfriend before the other one we spoke about, and they both slipped into heroin use, which affected Jesse's contribution to cooking meth. Around the time when Walt was first introduced to Gus, he needed to break into Jesse's house and try to wake him up. And whilst doing so, he knocked the heroin filled Jane on her back, causing her to choke to death on her own vomit. He could have helped her, but he didn't. His face after realizing he'd partially killed someone Jesse loved would suggest genuine remorse. I loved her more than anything. <laughs> <laughs> However, towards the end of his journey, he became a lot more heartless. I watched Jane die. I was there. And I watched her die. I watched her overdose and choke to death. I could have saved her, but I didn't. At this point, Jesse had basically just been told he was going to be tortured by Todd and his family to find out what he said to the DEA. And instead of leaving him be, Walt uses Jane's death to devastate Jesse even more contrasting his previous empathy. Then again, we witness his guilt after killing Mike. I think it's agreeable that Walt didn't develop an absence of empathy and remorse, but a lack of empathy and remorse, much less than a normal person, but not completely eradicated. The criteria in the DSM-5 explicitly states the word lack. Lack can mean either being without or not having enough. And in Walt's case, it's the latter. So then there's the question of intimacy impairments, relating to the incapacity for mutually intimate relationships, using exploitation as a primary means of relating to others, including deceit and coercion, or the use of dominance or intimidation to control others. It might appear Walt was capable of intimate relationships with his close family, i.e. Skylar, Walt Jr. and Hank, but being intimate relates to being close and personal with one another. So if we're analysing the old pre-cancer Walt, then sure, it would make sense to say he's intimate. However, what Walt ended up as couldn't have been less intimate. Constantly hiding things from his family, living a double life, 
pretending to be a certain way around them before completely changing his character when involved in the game, his family didn't even know who he was by the end of his time with them. Him keeping the truth hidden also shows deceit. We then go on to business associates and of course Jesse is the one people might try and suggest Walt had a good relationship with, but this suggestion would fall flat pretty quickly. Walt only ever stayed close to Jesse for personal benefit. Firstly the assistance of cooking meth of course, but also the thrill Jesse brought. I feel as though Walt cared for Jesse to an extent but only as long as he helped him. Jesse's life was ruined by Walt and he only suffered the more time he spent with him and therefore it wasn't mutual. With Gus, Saul, Mike, all the others it was just business, never developing a deep connection. He uses coercion a couple times which is persuading someone to do something using force or threats. His first encounter with Saul is an example of his capacity to do so. Saul was also someone Walt influenced with intimidation. Take that thing and get the hell out of here. You and me, we're done. What are you? Come on. Hey. Hey. We're done. When I say we're done. With a clean sweep of category A, I think we can hopefully all agree that Walt has impairments in personality functioning. Next is pathological personality traits in antagonism and disinhibition. Antagonism is characterized by these four traits. I could go on for a long time detailing every Walter White manipulation, but here are a few to tick the box. Of course the manipulation of Jesse when poisoning Brock was the eventual downfall. Another implicit but sad example was that of Gales. When Gale was made Walt's assistant, he was completely obedient, did everything right, tried hard to impress Walt and was very skilled and humble. But Walt still wanted Jesse back for his own satisfaction. So he purposely messed up a batch so he could blame it on Gale, report it to Gus and get a replacement assistant. Gail, what temperature did you set here? Here? Station 575C. I said 85. 85. I, I wrote it down, you said 75. I, I wrote it. Well, you wrote it wrong. It's not what I said. Deceitfulness or simply lying was one of Walt's most common traits, so that gets ticked off. Callousness refers to a lack of concern for the feelings or problems of others, a lack of guilt or remorse about the negative or harmful effects of one's actions on others and potentially aggression, or even sadism. We already discussed Walt's lack of remorse and already touched on his inability to understand the problems of others, clearly with Jesse. His aggression also developed over time. A hostility? This inhibition is characterized by these three traits. Irresponsibility is things such as disregard for and failure to honor financial and other obligations or commitments, or a lack of respect for and lack of follow through on agreements and promises. He promised to leave the game once he made a certain amount of money. $737,000, that's what I need. That is what I need. But as we know, he continued well past this point. His failure to honor Jesse's $5 million owed showed his lack of follow through on agreements and promises. Now impulsivity is something Bolt is on the fence with. The definition here states acting on the spur of the moment in response to immediate stimuli, or acting on a momentary basis without a plan or consideration of outcomes. Difficulty establishing and following plans. Sometimes Walt comes up with great plans, such as setting up Gus, pretending to be in a cancer related fugue state to have an excuse for his absence, and the poisoning of Brock. Problem solving and planning is arguably one of his greatest traits at times. However, he does have moments of impulsivity where he doesn't consider the outcomes of his actions. After Gale was murdered, Hank was asked to take a look at his chemistry notebook and concluded that Gale was in fact Heisenberg. However, when revealing his assumed findings at a family dinner, Walt couldn't suppress the pride of his inner Heisenberg. Just my humble opinion from what I saw on those papers. Looks like nothing more than just simple rote copying. Nice. Genius of yours. Maybe he's still out there. This led to Hank reopening the search for Heisenberg, eventually, as we know, discovering Walt as the man behind the madness. Again, an example that can be used for multiple points is the killing of Mike. The instant regret showing it was an impulsive and not a calculated action. I'm going to give Walt the benefit of the doubt on this one, but I'll leave it up for debate in the comments. Then there's risk taking. I believe it was when Walt first got diagnosed with cancer he convinced himself that there was no risk not worth taking if it meant he could save his family from financial struggles. From then on his life was bombarded with choices where he could have picked a safe option or a risky option and every time he picked the latter. His decision to join the drug game, his decision to murder men to save Jesse, the decision to go against Gus knowing how powerful he is, Walt had already faced death with cancer, increasing his risk taking abilities. 
I therefore conclude, Walt does appear to have the antagonistic and disinhibition pathological personality traits, making him two for two so far. The next criterion is that the impairments in personality functioning and the individual's personality trait expressed are relatively stable across time and across situations. It's essentially asking, are the criteria we've covered consistent in Walt's behaviour regardless of time and place? This might confuse you at first, as Walt acts different when he's at home compared to when he's in the game. But think about what we've covered. Walt's ability to lie and manipulate, his lack of intimacy, his pride, pride and ego. ego. These are things we see Walt do in a variety of instances. Whether it's the family or business associates, these traits are pretty consistent. Next, it states the impairments in personality functioning are not better understood as normative for the individual's developmental stage or socio-cultural environment. This essentially means we have to make sure Walt's traits can't just be explained by it being normal for people like him in terms of age and environment. Although Walt didn't come from money, he doesn't strike me as someone raised around thugs and drug dealers. He was clearly a very nerdy character, so his behaviour and therefore his impairments are entirely created by him. Next is that the impairments in personality functioning and the individual's personality trait expressed are not solely due to the direct physiological effects of a substance or a general medical condition. Now, Walt did have a few moments where alcohol made him do things he perhaps wouldn't have done sober. Like we've been bogarting this puppy long enough. <laughs> hey, bring the bottle back. Sorry, buddy, no can do. It's my son, my bottle, my house. <laughs> it's all right. What are you waiting for? Bring it back. However, he was rarely under the influence and his decisions were conscious. Finally, Walt is, of course, well over the age of 18. So despite people not really putting Walt in the psychopath-sociopath discussion, clinically he would firmly be in the realm of antisocial personality disorder. I've heard the argument that compared to other characters in the show, Walt isn't a sociopath. Gus split his employee's throat with no expression on his face. Todd shot a kid in the head and said he'd do it again. Yes, these are evil men and would also be diagnosed with ASPD, but the condition is simply a matter of yes or no. There's of course a spectrum, where other characters like Gus, Tuco, Todd, Mike, etc might be higher and further along, but that doesn't eliminate Walt. In conclusion, we can more than likely diagnose Walter White with antisocial personality disorder. Next, we have narcissistic personality disorder. The chair of the DSM-5's personality disorder work group stated that there's a fair amount of literature suggesting that narcissism is a dimension varying amongst people and across disorders, not necessarily a disorder in and of itself. Essentially, everyone has an extent of narcissism within and it falls along a scale. It doesn't appear in the current edition of the DSM-5 as a disorder. However, narcissistic personality disorder was previously diagnosable if someone had higher levels of narcissism assessed using criteria, which for the sake of this video, we're going to use. The criteria here are slightly easier to analyze compared to ASPD. Walter White would have to tick five out of the nine criteria listed, all of which are pretty self-explanatory, and I will ask in the form of questions. Does Walter White have a grandiose sense of self-importance? Meaning, does he exaggerate achievements or expect to be recognised as superior without actually completing the achievements? My first initial answer is actually, no. He doesn't claim to be richer than he is, or more talented than he is. And the fact Heisenberg became well known for cooking the best meth in the state shows he does actually back up his talent. So no, I don't think he'll tick this off. Next is Walt preoccupied with fantasies of success, power, brilliance, beauty or perfect love. Well yes, clearly he developed a fantasy of power when he realised how much respect he got being Heisenberg, when he saw what Gus was able to achieve, when he felt the rush of building an empire, he realised it was power that he truly wanted. I did it for me. I liked it. I was good at it. I was alive. Is what prevented him from selling his share of mephlamine with Mike and Jesse because he wanted the power to make more meth. It prevented him from leaving the game when he got the amount he said he'd quit at. It was his fantasy of how much power his empire could give him. Does Walt believe he is special and can only be understood by or should only associate with other special people or institutions? To an extent, yes, he does. Who are you talking to right now? Who is it you think you see? When he's in the mindset of Heisenberg, he believes he is worthy of much different treatment than when he's Walter White. He believes people must talk to him with a different level of respect. Also, when initially working with Gus, he has a superiority complex over Jesse. Like only he is worth working with someone as special as Gus. I hate to break it to you, Jesse, but our mutual associate was only using you to get to me. You see, he needs someone with expertise. Someone who knows what he's doing. In other words, he needs me. 
After he killed Gus, it was clear he thought he was going to be Gus's replacement. 137,000. It's less than with Fring. Losing Walter. Just because you shot Jesse James, don't make you Jesse James. Mike here is giving Walter a reality check that just because he killed Gus, that doesn't make him Gus, qualifying him for this criteria. Does Walt require excessive admiration? Well, yes, he wants admiration of his work from everyone that comes across it. The Hank scene at the table is very important in this sense. Because of Hank's failure to give Walt the credit for his work, unknowingly to him, it was annoying Walt. He also wanted to get his son an expensive car so his son would admire him too. Does Walt have a sense of entitlement, such as an unreasonable expectation of favourable treatment or compliance with his expectations? His entitlement is typically evident when he refers to himself as Heisenberg. When making deals with people or demanding something, because he's the great Heisenberg, it has to be under his conditions. I personally got the feeling when he asked Saul Goodman for something, even intimidating him if he didn't comply, as we saw previously. Does Walt lack empathy and is he unwilling to identify with the needs of others? We discussed this and yes. Is Walt frequently envious of others or does he believe that others are envious of him? Walt envied Hank's assertiveness and presence at the start, which eventually led to him trying to assert dominance back when making his son drink. He became envious of what Elliot and Gretchen had built the company to instead of just being proud of them. This spewed out when talking to Gretchen at the table. He even uses the company's worth to justify why he needs to stay in the drug game and build his empire. This again links back to Walt having his pride and believing that he was owed something. Does Walt show arrogant, haughty behaviours and attitudes? Well, he is arrogant about his product most definitely and fully aware no one can make what he makes. Also, his I am the danger speech to Skylar perhaps emphasises how arrogant he has become as a ruthless drug kingpin, someone capable of murder, someone feared and whose name rings out. Again, I'd come to the conclusion that Walter White qualifies for this condition and he would have been diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder. Another assumption is that Walt has some sort of split personality as he switches between Heisenberg and the regular Walter White, but this holds little to no credibility. Firstly, if you were to search split personality disorder, you would quickly uncover that the clinical term is dissociative disorder. People with dissociative identity disorder actually have two personalities, as in two brain capacities that they switch between. As we go to the board to look at the criteria, you'll come to see the actual severity of someone with dissociative identity disorder. Lost time or frequent memory loss, hallucinations or voices, changing in handwriting, People with the disorder essentially live different lives that have different memories, different functional abilities and aren't a conscious facade to fool people. Walter White clearly doesn't have this condition as he purposely acts different to manipulate his family and others, or to initially fit in the drug game. Of course, there could be plenty more conditions that we could analyse and cover, but the video would be extremely long. At least now we know Walter White does cover the main basis to be diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder, which would most likely fall into the realm of a sociopath, as well as being diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder. I believe that Walt was more desperate than evil. There's some decisions he makes or some lies that he tells that are completely unnecessary, but he is in his 50s and probably realises that he has to make this count. It's just that when certain people get desperate and the promise of money arises, their morality can become distorted, and they do things they wouldn't normally do. No, I said certain, perhaps pertaining to people with these ASPD or MPD traits, as evidently there's people with very low income who would never commit a crime. The bottom line of the point I'm trying to make is that not everyone in Walt's position would have done what he'd done. A lot of his actions were tied to the situation with Elliot and Gretchen at Grey Matter, and his pride became a big reason these future traits developed. Walt's biggest victim in my eyes was Jesse. Although Walt seemed to care about him, it was only ever for his benefit. Jesse didn't have the psychopathic or narcissistic tendencies like Walt, and that's why he was willing to leave the game regardless of the potential profits. I don't think Walt planned to become the bad guy, but once he realised what he'd become, he embraced it fully. Side note, if you want to support the channel then follow me on Patreon for editing tutorials, behind the scenes and other extra content.